This podcast is dedicated to my Aunt June. She texted me last night about brain foods to include in her smoothie. June is 86. She lives in an apartment in Southern California with other older adults, and most of them have memory problems. And what's really inspiring is June had learning disabilities, and she overcame them, and she became a, a special education teacher at San Francisco State. So she was a professor, actually, at San Francisco State for many years. And I've met some of her students, and they found June, like, very inspiring. So let's serve up some brain foods for June and the other seniors. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this, and be sure to hit the alert button to be notified of new videos each week. What's red, delicious, and good for your brain? You got it, beets. There was a 2010 study which found that drinking beet juice can increase the blood flow to the brain in older adults. And so this has a lot of potential for combating uh, the, the progression of dementia. And other studies have come to similar conclusions. So what is it about beets? Well, beets contain nitrate, which converts into nit nitric oxide. And you probably know that nitric oxide has a very powerful effect on the blood vessels. And so con consuming beets can increase the amount of oxygen that reaches your brain and can even improve aspects of your cognitive functioning. And there's even better new news, and that is that older adults who exercise and take beets get better results than those who just exercise. And so it's important to remember that beets can be consumed in many different ways. So my grandmother made a beet soup called borscht. Uh, there's also, you can eat beets, you can drink beet juice, and there's also beetroot powder. So beets are one of the best ways to improve your cognition through foods. Now, the next herb is called the herb of remembrance, and it's been used since Greek and Roman times, and it's called rosemary. And so I want to talk about some benefits of rosemary tea, courtesy of Healthline. Uh, rosemary tea is high in antioxidant, antimicrobial, and anti-inflammatory compounds. Rosemary tea also helps lower blood sugar. It also improves mood and memory. So for people that are dealing with brain fog, whether it's dementia or other cognitive deficits like, uh, like uh, brain fog, consider rosemary. It can improve the, the mood and memory. Um, of course, rosemary improves brain health, and it may protect the vision and eye health, as well as heart health and digestion. And so uh, we can uh, use rosemary as a, uh, as a tea. We can also apply it topically. And so uh, I'm going to explain before I forget how to apply it topically before I talk about the research. So what you could do is add a few drop, drops of rosemary oil to a lotion and then apply it to your neck. Um, and that is soothing and cognitive enhancing for some people. You could also use a diffuser, which is a great way of spreading aromatherapy throughout a room. And then you could also just inhale from the bottle. So you just buy a bottle and inhale it directly. Lastly, you can actually put it on Neguan, which is P6, which is an acupuncture point or an acupressure point right here, which is soothing, calming, and anti-nausea as well. So uh, what's, what's really exciting is the research. Um, and there was one study that was published in the journal, the International Journal, journal of Neuroscience. And they, had, they used rosemary oil aromatherapy, so topically. And they had 144 patients, and it was increased the mental alertness of nearly all the, the participants. And then there was a, a 28 uh, patient study published in the publication Psychogeriatrics, and all the patients had elderly dementia and Alzheimer's. 
and they applied a few drops of uh, lotion, I guess, uh, and, and used it in aromatherapy, and it improved, uh, again, improved almost all the cases. So uh, whether you use the tea or the drops or maybe a special supplement, then I, I'm unaware of the special supplements, uh, rosemary can be a really good approach for a food that improves cognition. Now, uh, sage. Now, the uh, genus name of sage is salvia. And there's at least four salvias available in the United States. Now, the most common, which is used in, in cooking, in tinctures, and, and common sage tea that you buy at a health food store or a grocery store, that's salvia officinalis. There's another kind of salvia or, or sage called lavendula folia. Then there's militariza, which is the Chinese version. And so that's sometimes called red root or Chinese sage or red sage. That's salvia militariza. And then there's salvia divinorum. And salvia divinorum is sold in head shops and is, is sold as basically a legal hallucinogen or a, a five minute uh, acid trip. I don't recommend it at all because of the quality control. You don't really know what you're getting when you go into a head shop and buy uh, this, this type of salvia, they call it. So there's the officinalis, the lavendula folia, and then there's the Chinese species militariza, which is widely used to improve, the Chinese species is widely used to improve the uh, blood flow. And so um, one of the studies that they did is uh, using uh, the lavendula folia essential oil. They use this in capsules. So only use essential oils um, uh, internally under professional use because it can be very irritating to the gastrointestinal tract. So they used um, basically uh, the uh, sage capsules, essential oil capsules, and there were significant reductions in caregiver-rated neuropsychiatric symptoms and improvements in a six-week period. Now, this is really big. So sometimes the people that have cognitive problems are not so aware of them. So by having a significant reaction to the caregivers, they could really see the effects of these therapies on, on the patient. So they also noticed in six weeks that there was uh, sufficient results that the, the caregivers saw to say that this was a good therapy. And then they did a more uh, rigid scientific study, a randomized double-blind placebo-controlled study, and that was with officinalis, that's say uh, salvia officinalis or common sage. And they used 60 drops, I believe it was in, in water, for a four-month period of time and there was improvement, as mentioned, on the Alzheimer's disease assessment scale and the clinical dementia rating scale. So just using 60 drops a day of salvia officinalis. And that's the essential oil, though, not, not the tincture. So uh, for these type of uses, you want to consider the essential oil. And if you do use it uh, internally, you want to seek uh, professional guidance for that. Uh, the next one I want to talk about is olive oil, which is an important component in the Mediterranean diet. And so um, uh, olive oil, this is the extra virgin olive oil. In my humble opinion, if you like olive oil and find it healthful, you should only use the extra virgin type. So what they found at Temple University is extra virgin olive oil boosts brain power and halts the progression of aging on the brain. And the study had an interesting uh, title. It was Extra Virgin Olive Oil Improves Synaptic Activity, Short-Term Plasticity, and Memory. So we do want to have more synaptic activity to link the brain cells together. And so the last one I want to talk about is ginseng. And some of you are going, well, ginseng is a food supplement. What, what are you doing talking about ginseng as a food? Well, ginseng is a powerfully neuroprotective and neuroenhancing substance. It's best, again, used under professional supervision with other um, component herbs or herbs that have a harmonizing effect on ginseng. But ginseng is found in, let's just say, it's found in teas. 
It's found in tinctures, which are liquid extracts. It's found in hard extracts, which are sometimes known as pastes. It's found in powders. It's found in syrups. It's even found in candies. And I have uh, recipes with ginseng and chicken. So what's the take home message? Well, ginseng is powerfully uh, neuro enhancing, but it's a medicinal ingredient. And that's why it should be used under professional supervision. It should not be used in syrups and candies. There's two reasons. One, because oftentimes in, in, in candies and syrups, they use the worst quality ginseng and mask it with sugar. The second reason we shouldn't use candies and, um, and hard extracts that have sugar of, of uh, ginseng is that the sugar actually is not good for the brain. The sugar actually helps degrade the brain. So take home message is use ginseng medicinally under professional supervision. Well, those are the top, the next top five brain foods, but I also want to leave you with some resources. I studied uh, neuroscience with a couple called the Simpkins, and they wrote a book called The Tao of Neuroscience, which I highly recommend. It's especially good if you're looking to integrate Eastern and Western aspects of neuroscience. And one of the most interesting things that they taught me is that the brain is always active. So I thought, well, when you're asleep, well, doesn't your brain sleep? You know, doesn't your brain know to hit the off switch and just psh, go to sleep? No, they go. The brain is just like the ocean. The ocean doesn't stop just because it's night. The ocean's going in and out and in and out. It's just like the brain activity. And they also, in their class, you talked about the importance of sleep in terms of repairing the brain. So we want to make sure if we have problems with thinking or our brain or brain fog to make sure we have good sleep. So if you're really interested in more practical east-west approaches to neuroscience, like the effects of meditation on the brain, I do recommend the Tao of Neuroscience. And then uh, Jim Quick has written an excellent book called Limitless, which has many uh, tips to uh, the best brain you can have. So this concludes today's podcast. Be sure to subscribe. That really helps us. And let us know what you think. For more information, visit our website, getwellfoundation.org. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time.